Twitter. Then he became popular leader. He continued to go further, and now he's Ghana's prime minister. Ghana, Ghana is the name. Ghana, we wish to proclaim. We will be jolly and merry and gay. The sixth of March, Independence Day. Are you ready? It's time to bring Bambini Fan to Cote d'Ivoire this Easter. Bambini show presents Easter Family Fun Day. Okay, to the left, back to the right. Now lean back. You know the vibes. It's family time, so daddy, mommy, friends, and family, let's all gather at Neo Gardino this Easter to bond together. Come and join our family games, dancing, singing, and other fun activities. Grab your ticket for a cool teeny gala service for single and eight. Easy Ghana service for a family of five and enjoy free Indomie, bouncy castle, swimming, and other free goodies. Dates on Easter Monday, 10th of April 2023, at Nel Gardino, Opsit DBLA, Cooperidia, at 9 a.m. sharp. Guest artist is multiple award winning group, Dope Nation. You should know that we are coming to the Bambini Easter Family Fan Day. Don't forget, 10th April, Dope Nation, Bambini. Make sure you grab your tickets. Schools, churches, and individuals can call 0558 218 548 or 0543 341 250 for further details. Bambini Easter Family Fun Day is brought to you by Indomie. Media partners are okay to the left, back to the right. Now lean back, you know the vibe. You know the Bambini vibe. See you there. Back to the right, now lean back, you know the vibe. Every child is so unique. You like no other. Outstanding in every way. It's me like no other. So anytime you walk and play, you like no other. You are special like Indomie. It's me like no other. Did you know that every child on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other? You like no other. I can play the drums. As their own unique talents and abilities. I can cook, I can paint. You like no other. In the me, in the me, you like no other. So every day, in whatever you do, remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, Mommy. Introducing Indomie Beef Flavor by now. This effort is FDA approved. Welcome once again to the Ghana Month, and we are here on another exciting episode with Honorable Yao Amot Frempong, who happens to be a lawyer and also a historian. In today's episode, we'll be so much enlightened about the journey of our own Osadifo Dr. Kwam Nkoma, his childhood, his achievements, his educational background, and a lot of things that concerns this man. I believe most of us really want to know more about him, and therefore, we are here in today's episode two make you more enlightened girls guys are you ready as we are beginning with the national anthem and i'll be standing with my lovely people here to join us god bless our homeland ghana and make our nation great and strong Bold to defend forever the cause of freedom and of right. Fill our hearts with true humility, make us cherish fearless honesty, and help us to resist oppressors with all our will and might forevermore. And help us to resist oppressors with all our will and might forevermore. Hooray! 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 But we've done real. Um, please let's resume our seats. Wow, my girls did exceptional, and I'm wild. Um, that's honourable. Yeah, I'm not sure you could give us all the lyrics word by word. I even thought by now he would have forgotten some of the lyrics. So, so. No, that's our national anthem. Wow. If I had less love for him. 
and so much in Christ. All right, so guys, girls, if you're ready, I am Abna Ahrenye, and as you know, I'm here with Ivoma, Princess, and also Erica of the Star Kid Africa reality show fame. As you can see them, the crown even tells us who the winner was. The runner-ups also follows. We are kicking start as soon as possible. Like I promised you today, we are going to talk about a surgical Dr. Kwame Nkoma. So, Sel will be given the floor. He'll give us all his views about it. And then, my girls will be asking him questions as usual. So, Sel, welcome once again to our show. Thank you. We are honored to have you always. Okay, so please tell us about Dr. Osage for Dr. Kwame Yeah, I would say that Nkrumah was just a human being mm -hmm. like all of us. But what made him extraordinary was the fact that he had a passion to liberate his people. He also had a passion to develop his country. He had a passion to unify the entire continent of Africa. And above all else, he had a passion for a selfless life to the extent that from 1909, that this man was born up to today, nobody can see any property that Nkrumah had because his property was Ghana. Mm -hmm. He never toiled for anything for himself. Everything he did was Ghana, Ghana, Ghana. You can't point at Nkrumah's house or Nkrumah's car. He sacrificed his own life and time for the success of this country. Mm -hmm. And I believe that this is the best education we are receiving, that if we can all think about mother Ghana and not to take anything from the state, Anything that belongs to the state, when you take it for yourself, you have denied the people of Ghana and generations yet to be born. And that is what makes Nkrumah a different human being because all others were not like him. Oh, that is so great. Let's laugh for Nkrumah. Wow. He is indeed a legend. Beginning with, we want to know more about his childhood. How did he start his life? Where was he giving birth to? Kwame Nkrumah, we are told, was born on 21st September 1909 at Nkrofo in the Nzema area in the western region. Okay. Now, Nkrumah, because there was no school at that time at Nkrofo, when he started school, he had to be sent to Hafasini, the district capital. We need to let children know that Nkrumah was the only child of his mother. The mother had only one child, and that was Kwame Nkrumah. So with this, you have to learn that many parents, when they have just one child, they make the, children swole, the child swollen-headed. Mm -hmm. In the case of Nkrumah's mother, no. She forced the child to learn in order to become a great man, as he did. Mm -hmm. A few remarkable things happened when Kwame Nkrumah was a, a baby. We are told that when he was born, you see, if you learn from our mothers, because they are warm, the stomach is very warm. Mm -hmm. As soon as a child comes out, this place is like very cold for him, and so he begins to cry. Mm -hmm. We are told that in the case of Kwame Nkrumah, he wasn't crying, mm -hmm. and for days he wasn't crying. Days? So, yes, yeah, so they thought it was a stillborn child. So they brought in a, a herbalist, a traditional priest, to find out what was happening. And he said, this man has come from a different planet. Wow. He's a great person that has been born. Nobody should disturb him. He will begin crying when he wants to cry. And then we are also told that when he was a little a boy, about two, three years behind his mother, you know, at the back of his mother, they were crossing the river. The mother stumbled upon something. And Kwame Kuma said, you stepped on a big fish. And the mother said, no, I bet you are at my back. <laughs> and what I... Uh, uh, I Stamped on is not fish. Says, check, and you see that it's fish. The mother checked, and it was a big fish. Mm -hmm. The woman was so scared that he wanted to throw it out. And Kuma said, Let us take it home. <laughs> so he prepared soup, and only Kwame Nkrumah ate it. Yeah, because the mother was scared. Wow. 
We are also told by Nkrumah himself that when he was in primary school, one day he went to school very early. One Monday morning, very, very early he went to school. And he picked the school bell and started ringing. Clank, 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 holiday, holiday, holiday. And all his friends who came to school asked him, is it what they say? Yes, the teacher says I should come early and tell you that nobody should waste their time coming here. So 8 o'clock, uh, from 7, between 7 and 8, when the teachers came, they waited, nobody was there. And Nkuma too had run away. <laughs> so the following day when the students came, they asked them, why was it that nobody was here yesterday? And they all pointed at Kwame Nkuma. They put him on the table and gave him very dirty lashes. Aww. And this is just to tell you that every child starts as a naughty child. But if you want to be a good man, a great man, you have to move away from naughtiness and then start learning seriously. Kwame Nkuma says that even when he went to, even his mother gave him lashes. And from that time, he started being a good boy. Oh, yeah. okay. So that's the early child of Nkrumah's life. At the secondary school training college, mm -hmm. I told you the last time that he so much like Kwejira Agri that any time Kwejira Agri came to teach them and left the class, I, Nkrumah would stand on the table and say that I am also Agri and then <laughs> teach the whole subject again and said, I want to be Agri. I want to be a great man in future. This is what children, you say about yourself. Try to choose somebody as your mentor. Try to be like that person. And then aim very high. And God will send you there. Amen. Oh, you didn't say amen. Amen. All right. Do you have questions for say so far? What do you want to know? Did he get a chance to meet Kweji Agri? That's a good question. He met Kweji Agri face to face on several occasions. He was so close to Agri. And I told you Agri was called Agri of Africa. And Kwame Nkoma said, one day I will also be called Nkoma of Africa. And then he said that I will be a governor general, like the, the head of this country. That was his single-minded purpose. And no wonder that Nkoma also became like Agri, because he became Nkoma of Africa. In fact, in the year 2000, Kwame Nkoma was voted the greatest African. So it meant that he was able to achieve his aim. And we are told that uh, it was his school days that Agre died. Agre traveled to the United States at the tender age of 50. And then news came to Ghana that Agre had died. And Kuma wept bitterly and was never of himself again. Oh. And so Nkrumah, because Agre studied in the U.S., Nkrumah also traveled to the U.S. to study. And one day he went to the tomb of Agri, where Agri had been buried in New York, and Nkrumah knelt down and wept bitterly. Oh, that is so sad. Uncle, please, why that no one can touch Nkrumah house or car? Oh, I understand. You said nobody could touch Nkrumah's car, nobody could touch Nkrumah's house. What I meant was that Kwame Nkrumah did not own any property. Kwame Nkrumah did not have any property, no. When you go to the Kwame Nkrumah Mausoleum, you will see some of the suit, the coat he was wearing. And when you uh, go inside, there is a stamp, property of the Republic, government of Ghana. Property of the government of Ghana. So it means even the clothes that Kwame Nkrumah was wearing, he felt they belonged to Ghana. He had nothing for himself. Okay. Yes. Uncle, please, she said um, Nkrumah went to school at um, Lincoln University. Yeah. Please, what did he study um, at Lincoln University? Lincoln University, Kwame Nkrumah studied economics. He studied sociology. He studied theology. And then he studied black history. So some of the subjects. And then above all, he also studied political science. So for the first degree and master's degree, Kwame Nkrumah studied these related disciplines and made him very, very powerful in the brain. That's why um, he has, that's why he's, he's got Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Uh, he had Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, yes, from Lincoln University, but that was not when he was a student there. 
after his master's degree, he left Lincoln to the United Kingdom because he wanted to go and study law. And then uh, he came, yes. But before he could complete his studies, they asked Nkrumah to come back to Ghana and help the UGCC as a general secretary. So he left his academic work. Indeed, even with the law, he left it. He started his PhD. When you do PhD, you call doctor of philosophy. Then you will be called doctor. That was what he was doing, and he had to abandon it to come and serve his people. Then when he had independence, Lincoln University gave the PhD to him that he started. He was finishing, and they called him to do something greater. So adding the things he did and what he had already written, they felt he deserved to be called doctor. Uncle Peace, why did not Kwame Nkoma wasn't afraid of what he did? Nkoma he was not afraid of whatever that he did. And that is exactly the same thing I will tell you. Whenever you aim at doing something, there's only one thing that will draw you back, and that is fear. As you sit there, you are doing very well. You understand, look at for your age, you are asking such intelligent questions. But if there is fear in you, even if you are 50 years, you will start shaking when you face the public, you understand, or the crowd. So Nkrumah was somebody who took away fear from whatever he was doing. And that is the advice I will give to all young people. Whatever you are doing, don't be afraid. Think about that and look at the end of it, that I have succeeded and you will succeed. It is not always that you will be successful. I told you Nkuma was in prison, but he felt that he would come back to rule the people of Ghana, and it happened. So when you do exam and you don't do well, or when you are cooking and then uh, the soup falls or anything, don't cry, don't be afraid. Start again and things will work for you. Wow. We have all failed before. Please, in your speech, you said Dr. Kwame Nkrumah went to Lincoln University, and that is a very expensive university. Was his family rich or poor, or did he get scholarship to Lincoln University? Intelligent question. Lincoln University at that time was an ordinary university. Nkrumah was poor. He didn't have so much money to go to Princeton or Harvard, but Lincoln was for black people. Blacks who were not too rich. So that was wh where Nkrumah went. So that should tell you about his background. And then also because he didn't have enough money to pay his school fees, Kwame Nkrumah did odd jobs. He did part-time work. And there was a time he even worked in the cold store. He was also cleaning hotels, hotel rooms, just to be able to get money to pay his fees. But because he was intelligent. He had half scholarship at the university, which made it easier for him to be able to pay the fees and also to rent an accommodation for himself. And then after his course, he was one of the best students. So he also became a lecturer at Lincoln University before he left for the United Kingdom. Wow, this is very educational. Do you also want to know if Dr. Kwame Nkrumah got married and then had a family of his own? Well, stay tuned. We are going for a quick commercial break. We will be right back. Happy! Yay! Do you feel that? So for Rydia, are you ready? It's time to bring Bambini Fun to Cope Town this Easter. Bambini Show presents Easter Family Fun Day. Okay, to the left, not to the right. Now lean back. The vibe. It's family time, so daddy, mommy, friends, and family, let's all gather at Nel Gardino this Easter to bond together. Come and join our family games, dancing, singing, and other fun activities. Grab your ticket for a cool tiny Ghana Sodas for single and 80 Ghana Sodas for a family of five. And enjoy free Indomie, bouncy castle, swimming, and other free goodies. Dates on Easter Monday, 10th of April 2023. At now Gardino, Opposite DBLA, Cooperidia at 9 a.m. sharp. Guest artist is multiple award-winning group, Donation. You should know that we are coming to the Bambini Easter Family Fun Day. Don't forget, 10th April, Donation. 
from being. Make sure you grab your tickets. Schools, churches, and individuals can call 0558 218 548 or 0543 341 250 for further details. Bambini Easter Family Fun Day is brought to you by Indomie. Media partners are okay to the left, not to the right. Now lean back, you know the vibe. You know the Bambini vibe. See you there. Not to the right, now lean back, you know the vibe. Every child is so unique. You like no other. Outstanding in every way. It's me like no other. So anytime you walk and play, you like no other. You are special like Indomie. It's me like no other. Did you know that every child on the planet has their own unique fingerprint like no other? You like no other. I can play the drums. I'm talented. It's me like no other. I can sing. I can dance. You like no other. As well as their own unique talents and abilities. I can cook, I can paint. You like no other. In the mirror, in the mirror. You like no other. So every day, in whatever you do, remember you are special in your own way, like no other. Thank you, Mom, for letting me know I'm special and for making me my special Indomie. Thank you, Mommy. Introduce it. Indomie Beef Flavor. By now. This effort is FDA approved. Welcome back from that quick commercial break, of course. We are still here with Mr. Frimpong Anoche, and he's educating us about our own Osajifo, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. And I believe I'm learning a lot, and I know you are also doing the same. We are going straight up to what is happening. We are now into the lifestyle of our own Dr. Osajifo. Uh, we want to know more about his life. Did he get married? Or because all your speech, I never heard his name of his wife or anything. Is it that uh, because he wanted to be a Roman father, he maintained that position or he changed his mind alongside? Okay, let me say that Kwame Nkrumah married, but he became the Prime Minister of Ghana before he married. So at the time of independence, he was not even married. Then a year later, he married uh, from Egypt. Mm. The, his wife was from Egypt. Uh, he made the president of Egypt at that time, President Nasser, to look for a young lady from Egypt for him. And the reason why Nkrumah married a woman from Egypt, a woman he didn't know at all, Nkrumah was ready to marry her, was simply because because we had just gained our independence mm -hmm. and we are black people and the people of Egypt are largely Arabs and different extraction. Mm -hmm. Nkrumah was afraid that the continent will be divided into two. Those in the north like Morocco, Algeria, Egypt, Libya, mm -hmm. you understand, Tunisia, these countries will break away because they look like white people. They will break away and form their own continent. And then black Africa would get shot of uh, those people. And Nkuma felt that our history would never be complete without those people, especially Egypt. Okay. So Kwame Nkuma decided to marry a woman from Egypt as a way of unifying the people of Africa. Because Nkrumah did not see himself only as a Ghanaian, but as an African and as a black man. And he wanted the continent to be one. Mm -hmm. And that was why he married a woman he didn't know anywhere. African unity and African mm -hmm. equality. And then with the woman, they had three children. Okay. You understand? You know that one of the children even became an MP in Ghana mm -hmm. and is still living in Ghana. Samia, uh, Samia Yaba. Nkrumah, he had three children. But earlier on, mm -hmm. Kwame Nkrumah had had a child okay. when he was a student. Mm -hmm. You know, not student at the secondary okay. level, but after all his education, before he could go to university, he was then a grown-up and then had a child called Dr. Francis Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. He became a professor at the University of Ghana okay. and is now on retirement and he's living in this beautiful country called Ghana. Wow. So Nkrumah had a family. And he, when his wife died, Fatia died during the time of uh, President Kufu, mm -hmm. the Ghana government did so well. 
President Kofu brought the mortal remains of Madame Fatia and buried her near the husband. So when you go to Kwame Nkrumah Mausoleum, you will see Kwame Nkrumah's grave, and then you will see Fatia's grave. Mm. Thank you. So why did they say Fatia Fatia Nkrumah? Why that thing? The reason why Ghanaians said Fatia Fatia Nkrumah was that this was our leader, who was a bachelor. You know, Kwame Nkrumah was a very handsome man, mm. exceptionally handsome. You know, and Ghanaians will say, hey, now why you cry about what is Which woman would fit this man? Mm -hmm. And then everybody was waiting. Uh, before independence, he was going everywhere. Nobody saw his wife. Mm -hmm. And then independence time, he would sit there. See, when our president said, you know that they have their wives beside, by the, them. beside them. And Nkrumah was sitting alone. Oh. And then a year later, they heard that Nkrumah was bringing a woman from Egypt. And then when she arrived at the airport, they saw a super model. Wow. Then the Ashantis made a kente cloth and named it Fatia Fata Nkrumah. That is, Fatia really deserves Nkrumah. Wow. Yep. Say, please ask that Kwame Nkrumah failed his exam before. Yeah, I would say yes. He failed an examination in the United States kingdom. Kwame Nkrumah sat for an entrance in order to go and read law, but Kwame Nkrumah failed that examination. And he also wanted to go and do PhD doctorate in philosophy in the United Kingdom. And that one too, they did not accept him. And it is good that we know this that when you see any human being standing there, it does not mean the person is far better than you. The person has also had challenges in his life before. The person has also had failures in his life before. But your ability to reorganize yourself and fight back is what will make you a great man or woman. When Kwame Nkrumah failed the law, he then started doing the course with the Lincoln University that gave him the PhD, you understand, yes. So Nkuma wanted to become a lawyer, but he failed that one. But it didn't stop him from progressing to become a great man as he did. Thank you. So uh, with all the episodes, I'm now going to ask questions on all the episodes since today is the last episode. What is the most thing Kwame Nkuma achieved for himself? And then he himself felt at peace with it. If you're able to answer, I'll dash you something. Being able to unite the, um, the African continent and being the president of Ghana. The African continent is not <laughs> united, but he made an effort, and his effort at least brought us to yes, set up the <laughs> Organization of African Unity in 1963, which is now called African Union. So at least you are partly right. Okay. Yes, who else? Who can tell us something? Kwame Nkrumah's greatest achievement? Um, trying to be like James Kwejiri Agri. Trying to be like that. Yes. Somehow. Somehow. <laughs> not somehow. Above that. His greatest hey, achievement will not be wanting to be like Dr. Agri. But uh, you know that he champion the independence of Ghana. Yeah. So he was the father of the country, the founder of the country. You don't have to forget that. Yes. Oh, my people. <laughs> anyway, you girls have done so much well from the beginning to the end of Ghana month. And as we are ending, we wouldn't say bye-bye without knowing more about our own honorable Mr. Anoche. So, sir, kindly yes. tell us where you are located and how we can find you. Yeah, my office is at Dansuman. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. In fact, uh, I'm honored. I'll be coming to you very soon for more details. Things that we cannot share uh, with kids right here, I'll be coming to him in them. So you, you can also inbox me if you want to join me, then we go together. Anyways, on this platform and on this note, I'm reminding you that very soon we are going to host another family Fun day out in Koforidja by the 
kind courtesy of Boss Media Production, yes, which has Beth Bambini, that is educational and also very entertaining. And we are here to entertain you all and also educate you as well. We are coming with your, is a surprise at tea, so very soon you'll be hearing the banger in town. Hip, hip, hip. Hooray. Mm -hmm. Let's say bye-bye to our fans. Bye-bye. <laughs>